I am become Fitz, the bringer of one eye. Welcome back to another episode of the White Noise Podcast. I'm Ethan, joined by Gobert Goppenheimer. Hello. Again. Again. <laughs> Again. <laughs> and today our guest is Mr. Paul. Hello. And welcome back to White Noise. We've been we've been gone for a while, but we're back. You know, months ago we said we're gonna have a Barbie Oppenheimer episode. And look at that. We're and here a, we are. We're having a Barbie and Oppenheimer episode. Men of your words. Somebody asked me a question the other day. Would you rather have a 20-pound tongue? Dude, that's how you're going to start this? Or a 20-pound nutsack? <laughs> Somebody asked me that at work the other day. <laughs> and I was just sitting there like, huh. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, I couldn't give an answer. It's like, you're just going to not answer that? I'm thinking. A <laughs> uh, 20-pound nutsack, probably. That's going to hurt, dude. Or what? Like a 20-pound tongue isn't going to hurt? I feel like your jaw muscles would adapt, though. Like, you'd be able to. You just probably wouldn't be able to talk anymore. You'd be a terrible kisser. <laughs> or a great one. Or a great one. Yeah, but imagine 20 pounds of nuts. <laughs> I could just, like, like, I could feel the weight in my mouth already. You feel the weight of the nuts in your mouth? <laughs> no. <laughs> That's, uh, uh... No, I'm talking about the tongue, guys. <laughs> Paul said, 20 pounds of nuts? <laughs> Man, I don't know. Damn. This is our this is our comeback episode. Your guy's comeback. Very poor choice words. Very poor choice of words. Uh, anyways, we saw Barbie and Oppenheimer back to back, and we will be reviewing it later in the episode, so stick around for that. But, you know, we've been gone for a couple months now, and a lot has happened in that time. We posted the last episode of White Noise on a Friday. And that same Friday, Fitz the dog, the one from One-Eyed Studios, had to be taken to the vet, emergency hospital. It looked like it was going to be rough. It looked like he was going to be gone that weekend. But now nah, he just had heart failure. So a couple pills, boy was back on his feet in no time. Uh, and then, you know, just living the pill life, like a true <laughs> old man. And then uh, a couple weeks ago, the heart failure won. So the heart lost. The heart lost. And Fitz is no longer with us. Fitz of One-Eyed Fitz has succumbed. Moment of silence for Fitz. All right, cool. Um, so Gavin, what have you been up to in the past few months? Uh, working. That's it? Mm-hmm. Nothing new? Mm-hmm. You changed your wardrobe a bit. I did. <laughs> so had to, had to match the Kennergy of the movies we were watching. <sighs> so cool. I, I dressed up for Oppenheimer for this episode. Gavin dressed up in his normal wardrobe for the past five months. He just wore a pink one this time. Pink shorts. Can't see it. They're pretty cool, though. Uh, you wish you could see it. Go ahead and stand up, Gav. Show the people. Yeah. <clears throat> no, I don't want to. They're really short, so probably can't show that on YouTube. <laughs> Not that short. <laughs> They're really short. So we decided to bring the podcast <laughs> back. <laughs> so we're, we're recording this. We're, we're going to have it out real soon. And then White Noise will return sometime soon. So it won't be next week. And old-fashioned. <laughs> we're, what's not, that? we're not gonna tackle that beast again. Wait, what's the what's, what's old fashioned? <laughs> uh, such young boys at that time. Yeah, it was a year ago. <laughs> was a year ago. Crazy stuff. Crazy stuff happens. But anyways, so today, the entire process of setting this up <laughs> was a nightmare. 
everything that could have gone wrong went wrong. And more. Ethan put us in the back of a white van today. That was part of it. That was part of it. Um, anyways, so it all started with, I was supposed to get my windshield fixed from 7 a.m. to 11 a.m. today. That's when they were supposed to be at my house. So I was kind of stuck at home from that time. And then 11 o'clock rolls around, and I haven't heard anything, so I give him a call, and they're like, oh, he'll be there by noon. By noon? I have to see Oppenheimer at 2.30. And uh, I live like an hour away. Better take that windshield to go. (laughs) Gotta hurry up. And then at that time, too, when I called him, I noticed it's kind of hot in here. So the AC's broken. It's like 85 degrees. Uh, so the windshield technician didn't get there till 12.15. And while I'm getting everything ready for the podcast, I'm just drenched in sweat because there's no AC in the house. Second the guy with the windshield's done, I throw everything in the car, and I book it. And I had to pick up Gavin, and the Oppenheimer showing was at 2.30. I picked him up at 12.15, 2.15. So 15 minutes before the movie started. I think we got there right at 12.30. So, cool. 12.30? You guys two, went back to 2.30. 2.30. Time. <laughs> 2:30. Wrong with us. Sorry. Fast. I'm all over the place. I'm all over the place. So we watched Oppenheimer. Afterwards, we went to go eat. We uh, were going to go see Barbie at 7.30. We were going to pick up Paul before going to go see it. Mm-hmm. We get to Paul's house, and Paul's like, the movie's at 7.45. We have plenty of time. I was like, no, it's at 7.30. I said, no, I looked up the two show times at 7.15 or 7.45. So I was like, oh, and I looked at our tickets, and the show time was at 7.15, and we noticed that. At 7.11? At 7.11, yeah. Okay, <laughs> oh, my god, I told you to show That's up. That's so close. Um, I was like, yeah. literally five minutes before that, I was butt naked in the shower. 7.11, <laughs> movie starts at 7.15. So we booked it. Gavin had to go pee, so we wasted some time there. But, uh, what? And then. My fault? We got. In the theater, in time for the last preview. We, we beat it by like two minutes. I know, it was great. I was actually pretty happy. I was kind of pissed. <laughs> so, we're just, time was not on our side today. We watched Barbie, and we're like, okay, well, we have to film the podcast so that we can get it out in a timely manner. And we come to our filming location where we always film it. And <laughs> they changed the locks <laughs> without telling me. So I tried to unlock the door, and we can't get in. And I already had all my equipment in here. So we had to race to my father's house to uh, get a key. And then I also needed to borrow his work van for other reasons. So we also grabbed that. And uh, while we were driving away, I realized that I forgot my one-eyed fits hat, a pair of gym shorts, and some black slippers on the roof of the van. So they're somewhere in the middle of the street. <laughs> and uh, <coughs> then, we, then we get here. We, sit, we start setting up. And I realize I left the stuff for the cameras in my car. <laughs> that you just <laughs> dropped off. I just dropped off. So I had to go back and get that. I made sure to leave when Paul wasn't here. So I didn't have to hear him bitch about it. I thought you were taking a shit. <laughs> yeah, he comes back in. He's like, where's Ethan? Oh, yeah. He, what did I say? He's like, oh, he's no longer with us. He, he, had, he had a go. I was like, oh, he's taking a shit. And then, <laughs> yeah. I, and then I walked in the back, and the door was cracked. I was like, why is this door cracked open? And I go get get whatever I'm drinking right now, and then I come back out. And then that's when you're like, yeah, he's not with us anymore. <laughs> he forgot these. I sent you a text. Yeah. I have to be at work at 5.15. It's... 11 14. <laughs> oh crap. I have to be up in six, less hey, than six hours. That's okay. We're ahead of schedule. <laughs> um, I had a schedule. Yes. So, yeah, I had to drive back. I just ended up getting my car. I kind of gave up on getting home at a reasonable hour. So, now we're actually recording, and I had to change into this outfit. And um, that's the story of how tonight's going. How tonight, how my day's going. To to put this show out for you guys and all for you, I have to edit it all and have you. it out by tomorrow, so that'll be fun editing out all of Gavin's curse words. I haven't, uh, I haven't even. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> nice. There you go. Um, There's one for you. But yeah, that's that's the story of us. Story of tonight. 
That's just the last 12 hours, so. Yeah. Called off of work because I was hungover. That's what I was doing over the last five months. <coughs> Having some asked. brewskis? Yep, nobody asked, so I'll just say it. Paul, what were you doing last night? I, had, I was at a Morgan Wallen concert. Thanks for asking. And how was that concert? Oh, the scenery was great. The music was great. The beer was great. The beer was The Kennergy was just great. The Kennergy was unmatched in this concert. The beer, man, is making you feel like you could do Kenny thing. Oh, my gosh. You're, you're not wrong, Gavin. <laughs> so, so Ethan, he looks at me in this, like, conniving way and says, why do you think I picked you up, Paul? <laughs> why do you think I drove you here, Paul? Because he, he planned on keeping me here all freaking night. It's terrible. I just thought of that uh, on my my drive back over here when I picked up the camera stuff. Because I was like, you know, it's a good thing I drove Paul because he can't be like, you know what, I got to go home and just leave. I could just Uber. You could. Were you going to do that? Probably not. Don't worry. I'll buy your steaks If you would have left me here, I would have been very upset. You already said? Go buy my steaks tomorrow. Well done. Where are you going for steaks? Gavin, you're your business. Gavin, you're not... Going to be hanging out with us. Yeah, yeah it's usual. <laughs> because you're hanging out with someone else. Uh -huh. You're the reason we're not all hanging out tomorrow. Actually, yeah. Hey, if he gives us one reason, I thought he's out. Well, he actually told uh, Jacob about that well in advance. I told doesn't, Jake about it matter. like a month in advance. To me, that doesn't matter, though. Actually, he told Jacob that it was next week and he would miss. So That's because of the date I was told. Bryson, Bryson, <laughs> it's your miss, fault. You're going to miss this week and next week. Kick him out. <laughs> Get him out. I'm not missing next Speaking week. Speaking of, we're missing someone. We're missing Jacob. The Jakey? And, uh, the Jakey, and unfortunately... No the Jakey factuality. No the Jakey factualities anymore. Um, we, we talked about it, and it's something that schedule wise we just couldn't work out in the contract so <laughs> jacob will be back as a guest occasionally but uh he will not be a, a regular <coughs> cast member they uh they asked me to cover for him but they just can't afford me so I'm yeah just a guest so he's just well. a guest today and we can't afford him because scheduling too contract wise no it, it, it just, it's it just because they can't afford me <laughs> it's just that no, we, we can afford him he's pretty cheap i did not get a contract <laughs> Wait, you, you guys are getting paid? <laughs> Ethan and I almost went to Vegas this week. We almost did. And I mean, we can still go. You don't? Weekend's not over. We can just start it. What do you mean? For you, maybe. For you, maybe. No, you have to work tomorrow. I do. Unfortunate. I wasn't talking about you. <laughs> I don't get invited to anything. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're, you're the reason why we're not hanging out tomorrow. Yeah, but... We're not going to invite you. It happens. All right. Let's get into... The movie review. Are, is that the static? Oh, wait. Are we going to do... Which one first? We took the movie review sound by off because that button is broken. So... Don't. Oh. Exquisite. <laughs> 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 All right. Uh, movie review. So, the first movie that we watched was <clears throat> Oppenheimer. And Paul will exit since he did not watch it. And we will call him back in when the time is right. Goodbye, Paul. Okay. So Gavin and I watched Oppenheimer. And Gavin, what were your initial thoughts of the movie? Um, I liked it. Um, I know a lot of people had a, a huge gripe that it was super long, me included. I would have liked at one point. Dude, sitting on those seats, I'm sorry, but my ass hurts off after sitting on those seats, dude. I wanted like a five-minute period for me to just stand up and like walk around or something. Other than that, though, I thought all the actors... Which, you know, had, like, almost every actor in existence in this damn movie. Yeah. So, they all brought their A-game. Really good. Nice, nicely well done, acting-wise. What do you about you? What do you think? So. Are we doing spoiler right now, or? No. No spoiler? Or, yeah, we'll do spoiler after my initial thoughts. Okay. So, I was let down, overall. I, I was expecting a lot more, and... If you are a fan of the show, or if you've seen at least a handful of those episodes, probability is that you have definitely seen me talk about Tenet and how it is an abomination and one of Christopher Nolan's worst work. And um, my biggest gripe with Tenet was the sound design. 
every one of the sounds was just overpowering of the dialogue. And I, it, Oppenheimer had that same exact effect where all the music, all the sound effects, sound design and everything just drowned out any of the dialogue. And it was also constant. It was like simple dialogue scenes with this just ear piercing music that was just loud volume all the way up. Mm -hmm. So, and that it was like that from start to finish. There was only a handful of scenes. I can only think of two where there was just no music or maybe really quiet music. And those scenes I was like engaged in every other time. It's just distracting. You're really, you're really like stressing trying to listen to it so you can hear the words that are being said. Um, Especially since you had a lot of characters that spoke in an accent. Mm -hmm. So for people that don't speak in accents or yeah. are like me, hard to understand them. It's even worse to try to understand what they're saying yeah. with loud music on top of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's, that is, um, that being said, the music was cool. It was cool. I like the music. But when it's loud good. blaring in your, in your face like that, mm -mm. um, like you, like you said, the actors were good. I think every actor that, that showed up, showed up and really gave it their all. And basically any actor in the movie, an argument can be made for an Academy Award for them, whether it's Killian Murphy for like leading or anybody else for supporting. Um, even you, Josh Peck. Even you, Josh Peck. Even though you were only in the movie for like five minutes total. Um, no, I thought I thought Not it was even. great. In uh, In the last couple months since we haven't done the podcast, I finished watching Peaky Blinders. So I got to see Killian Murphy more as his character in that show. And I just, I love seeing him as Oppenheimer. And I saw a lot of range with him. You oh, know? yeah. He's, he did a phenomenal, he murdered this role. He didn't just he crush it. He dropped a bomb on it. He exploded <laughs> this role. Um, but yeah, so I think actors, great. Um, there, were, there are shots from movies. Like, I can pick out shots. And like, oh, that is a well-composed shot. That is a beautiful shot. I loved the the use of just, of Christopher Nolan's use of, I, I can't find the word of it, but symbolism in a way, not really. Um, there were a couple scenes where Oppenheimer is experiencing, like in his mind, like the world around him, a bomb's going off. He's so overwhelmed or anxious or feeling emotion or tuned out. Um, and then other stuff is done throughout the movie, which we'll get into when we talk about spoilers. But those elements were great. But in Christopher Nolan fashion, it's like the entire movie from start to finish is all like so quick. Like it was a three hour movie that was so quickly paced. Like every scene, it's just like a person speaks and then immediate, like it's just constant, 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 constant. Like there's no room to breathe. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense, um, while also being a really long runtime, um, he's he's also known for, as of recently, just his like the storytelling is so cut up. So a scene might take place, and the next scene takes place before that, or way in the future, and it's just everything so um, mixed up, which. It, it could be hard to keep track of, especially when you have both color and black and white. Yeah. So with the combination of those two, it's like, what's going on? When when does this truly take place? <laughs> um, so that can be confusing too. But I, I felt like the end, like once it came to the end, all that was tied up neatly. And you're like, okay. And you kind of gain an understanding of the timeline that was being told. Um, but there was, a, it was just a messy narrative there's no single narrative you can kind of hold on to um because you're kind of having to like it's a puzzle piece at that point um without without spoilers that's my initial thoughts of it and um with most christopher nolan movies i feel like you have to watch them multiple times to really dissect them and get the full effect of them mm -hmm. um like memento for example the prestige inception even um but yeah so <clears throat> we are in spoiler to uh, spoiler territory now. So <clears throat> if you would like to avoid spoilers, skip to the timestamp on the screen. And we will continue. So spoiler talk, Gavin. Parts you liked, parts you didn't like. Something about the whole story. 
Um, <clears throat> I thought the whole subplot with ugh, I forget her name, but it was the communist chick that he was. Her name was the character's name was Jade. Actress is Florence Pugh. There you go. Yeah, her. I appreciated the storyline, like more depth into Oppenheimer's character, especially what it did to his relationship and stuff. However, I thought overall, I don't think it had any real impact on the story. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I feel like we could have shaved off, like especially again, since one of my biggest complaints is the runtime. I feel like we could have shaved off like 10 minutes by just getting rid of all of that with that character, considering mm -hmm. she ends up killing herself, I think, <laughs> or I don't, I don't think we can say that on YouTube, my bad. She ends up no longer being alive intentionally. And w it, there's like a part in the, it's like a part where it's playing over it and there's like a hand on the back of her head. Yeah. So I don't know if she was murdered or if it was self-inflicted. Um, or if it was um, Oppenheimer's imagination, like, oh, it's his fault. Exactly. That's what I was thinking. I'm like, exactly, maybe that's yeah. what they were going for. So uh, stuff like that, like when it's when it's such a split second, it's hard for you to make a clear interpretation of it. Mm -hmm. um, if it was more clear, maybe a little bit longer, then you could have come to a better conclusion. But right. it's just it becomes sloppy, and that was my big problem with with Tenet. It just felt really sloppy and convoluted. I I liked Oppenheimer a lot more than Tenet, um, mainly because it nailed the characters. So the characters were really fleshed out. Mm -hmm. You know, you you. Uh, even for ones that had such little screen time, you actually like you, you, Josh actually, Peck. you actually felt for them and can see their their development. Um, so that's something I really appreciated. Whereas in Tenet, again, Tenet, awful. <laughs> Check it out. Uh, I'll have to watch that. You didn't someday. he you didn't care about any of the characters in Tenet. Um, they tried to make you care about the main character. Nah, you had nothing. The lead actress, nothing. The villain was just your standard stereotypical villain, and it was just it's so bad. The only good part of that about, about that movie is Robert Pattinson, who allegedly, if I if I don't don't quote me on this, uh, at the wrap on when they wrapped up Tenet, he's the one that gave Christopher Nolan the Oppenheimer biography that led to the making of Oppenheimer. Oh wow! So Robert Pattinson, you're the reason I didn't like Oppenheimer. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but he is the reason you tolerated Tenet. Yes. There you go. Full circle. Win, full circle. Uh, but well, yeah, I mean, Oppenheimer, I, I will definitely watch it again just because there's so much in there. And Christopher Nolan, I think, is a master director, mm -hmm. a genius. I, I think he's one of the better directors still currently working. Um, however, I mean, the last few movies I've seen of his, the most recent ones, I haven't really enjoyed. Like Dunkirk... I felt was painfully slow paced and just hard to get through. Granted, I've only seen it once in theaters when it first came out. Um, then Tenet, obviously, and then Oppenheimer. But uh, still love his directing style. Like I said, there's so many shots from the film you can pull from. Um, the the bomb scene when they actually test it is amazing because I was going to say we got to talk about that. That's the only time it's silent in the film too, it's, which is pretty which funny. I, I guess you can. You can take that as everything else around you is loud, 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 loud if you want to try to spin the whole sound design thing that I have a problem with. And then the bomb goes off and it's just silent and everyone's reaction to it mm -hmm. in this silence. And then once the silence is gone, then it's loud. And um, and then it jump scares you. Jump scares. Like it did to me. The guy sitting next to me was <clears throat> like jump scared with everything. Dude, it made me jump. I was like, oh, God. like I jumped loud. Um, yeah, I if anything... Like, it, it makes me more, in, like, I've always been interested in, you know, American history and especially, like, the Manhattan Project. So I always just thought that was a cool name. It's like, the Manhattan Project, that's a cool name. Um, it was a pretty cool name. <laughs> and then, uh, so it, it makes me want to kind of dive into the, the history of it more and see what matches in the movie and what doesn't. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, it was... What about Robert Downey Jr.'s character? What do you think about that whole arc? I thought... He started making some good arguments at the end, oh, dude. Like 100%. the whole time, I'm like, I think pro Oppenheimer, right? I'm like, yeah. man, Oppenheimer, he's cool, whatever. Then Robert Downey Jr.'s character goes off on a tangent. He's like, no, he doesn't. He's not. He doesn't feel bad. He's just trying to play you for fools. He mm -hmm. just wants to be the one that's like, yeah. He wants to be the name, yeah. And it's like he wants to be the one that takes all the credit. Well, for I think I think a big part of it all is 
you can make an argument for both sides. Exactly. That's, that's why. That's why. That's how, That's what I liked about the framing of the story, um, because you can look at all the all the facts and be like, okay, well, this makes a lot of sense. This makes a lot of sense. So it's not a clear cut like one hundred percent right, one hundred percent wrong. You exactly. Know? And that's why, like, again, the whole movie, I'm like, man, pro Oppenheimer. And then the moment he drops all that stuff, I'm yeah. like. You, you're making kind of, you're exactly kind of making I mean, some sense. What, like that that whole thing of him saying, you know, he he was complaining about all this until it made him like the most famous man on earth. Exactly. And he's never he never said he regretted it. You know. And then don't forget, Truman. Truman. Yeah. <laughs> Gary Oldman. Gary Old Gary Oldman playing Harry Truman, Harry S. Truman, and Winston Churchill. And there's actually a picture of the real. Gary Truman and Winston Churchill like meeting, and it's cool that Her- that Gary Oldman played the both of them. I thought you know I it's, didn't recognize it until you pointed it yeah. out. I'm like this guy sounds familiar, whatever. Yeah. And you look at me and you go, is that Gary Oldman? <laughs> he starts talking again. And all I could see is Shen from Kung Fu Panda. I'm like, <laughs> oh my god, it's it's Gary Oldman. Well, like I thought he was. That's, I think that's the the charm of this movie that I actually really enjoyed was just all these big names playing these like minor roles. You know, it was a truly ensemble cast of these big Hollywood names. Like even Casey Affleck was in it for a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, Rami Malek was in it for like, he had an important role at the, at the end there, yeah. but he was in it for like a minor moment. Um, I, I will say, I think the strongest performance in my opinion um, was Emily Blunt playing Oppenheimer's wife, Kitty Oppenheimer. I think she did great. I mean, every time she was on screen, Phenomenal. Oh, dude, especially during, like, the interrogation scene or yeah. whatever. Ooh, that was awesome. And then I guess one thing I got to add real quick. <laughs> I don't know what you're going to say. Them, <laughs> them name-dropping John F. Kennedy. Like, he was going to be a damn Marvel villain or something like that. It's like, oh, yeah, some guy by the name of JFK, John F. Kennedy. Or, like, I'm like, yeah. and the people behind us laugh. I'm like, that's, like, an end credit scene <laughs> from, like, Iron Man or some shit. You know, it's like. I, I thought that was super funny. I thought that was stupid. That. That's why I was like. Yo, politician MCU, like hey, politician <laughs> cinematic universe. I know you already you got Gary. You already got Gary Oldman cast in two roles. No, dude. Human Torch and Captain America style. <laughs> um, no, but Oppenheimer overall, what would you rate it? I'm gonna give it an eight, eight and a half, like an eighty percent. That high? I'm gonna give it that high because I thought, despite some of the dialogue being a little hard to understand, I don't imagine everybody else had the same problem. I liken it to. Dialogue is kind of hard to understand for me sometimes. I don't know. I So I, I understand that argument, but the fact that I've had the problem with Tenet and this movie, Common Denominator, Christopher Nolan, mm-hmm. I feel like it's hard to be like, oh, maybe it was just me, you know? I will admit, though. Like, in, in Tenet, I was feeling like, you know, maybe Tenet wasn't that bad. Maybe it was just me. But this experience has solidified that Tenet, I expect so much more from Christopher Nolan. Um, I'd say the long length time... Uh, I did have a problem with the out of nowhere sex scene, the little wiggle room part. <laughs> just like, whoa! It just hit you like a train. You're, I was you're like, just watching whoa. them like out of nowhere. Oh, I mean, I, okay, I take it back. I didn't hate it, but I was just like, <laughs> I didn't hate it, but I was just like, that was the last thing I was expecting to see in an Oppenheimer movie. To be mm-hmm. fair, though, I didn't know anything about Oppenheimer yeah. before this movie, so um, out of nowhere, and then again, just for her to die, like what, an hour and a half later. In the movie, yeah, and just never really be referenced again. Yeah, um, I would rate it probably a six out of ten. Six out of ten. If, uh, if we were doing percentages, maybe a sixty-three percent. Uh, just because uh, the problems hold it back too much, the the mistakes of it. Mm-hmm. Um, I it just, I think it felt in a way too intense for the movie it was, and granted making an atomic bomb is a pretty intense situation, especially in this scenario. Um, oh, I enjoyed the buildup to yeah. the detonation. It was, um, it was crazy. But when it's a movie just of dialogue, it's all dialogue, it it felt, like, to, like I said, too intense with, with sound. I, I, I will never get over the sound design of it. So uh, 6.3, 63% is my final score for Oppenheimer. Let's move on to Barbie, the double feature Barbie. Uh, and, and, uh, so we saw Barbie, like we said earlier, um, we showed up just in time for it to start and let's start with Paul. What were your initial thoughts of the movie? Just no spoilers. 
Oh, really? We're, we'll, we're doing no spoiler review and then spoilers after. What was my initial thought of, like, how it, how it, it all played out? Um, so I, uh, I went into the movie not really knowing what it was going to be about. I don't know if anybody did. I've seen the trailer, whatever. So naturally, I'm like, Margot Robbie, I'm in. Dua Lipa, count me in again. Um, and then I didn't know what it was about. And then the first, like, two to three minutes, I knew exactly what it was about. And um, I'll probably never watch it again, but it was, it was something I was actually hyped for. <laughs> me <know>? too. <laughs> and it just didn't live up to the hype. I mean, I, do, I understand, like, it's not catered to my audience, which I don't care. I just... <sighs> I think that was the main problem for certain people is you just weren't the target audience for it. But then it's like, who was? I looked, <clears throat> after watching it, I was like, this is weird. Um, I think it was just uh, fucking trash, yeah, at the end of the day. Yeah. It's 100%. It's absolute cool. garbage. Right? Right. I mean, I'm not going to watch it again. Oh, yeah. uh, Ken, freaking um, Ryan Gosling, awesome. Margot Robbie, awesome. Hot. Um, like, there were some funny parts. Like, Will Ferrell was, like, funny. And, like, it, 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 it was weird because I tried to go into movies – not thinking about like real world stuff, and mm-hmm. I feel like they really brought in this real world view to it, which took me out of this Barbie world. And I'm pretty unbiased <coughs> when it comes to stuff. I don't mind if if like the creators want to add something. Sure, you want to send a message, but this one was like it was basically. I, I can't I can't tell you who the target audience was. It's like was it for older women for the young generation? Like what what the hell was going on here? But that's, I guess, my initial thoughts. I don't know. I, I'm kind of like that, too. I don't mind if you want to put a hidden meaning or even a more abrupt meaning. But I think the problem is, it's like, if you're going to do that, I feel like it should be a little bit more subtle. Yeah, they made it all about it. It's like, and I mean, I don't even mind that it's all about that, but it's just like, again, it's like you're treating the audience as if they're dumb. Like, you got to say it. Like, it, like, the fact that you have to keep saying it over and over and over and over, it's almost like, Straight up disrespectful, like, okay, I got it. Like, yeah. I get it. Yeah. You don't got to keep saying it. Like, for, like, And so, if anything, that was the only reason it was pissing me off is because it was like, okay, I, I got it. I got it. Patriarchy. I got it. Mm-hmm. Like, you don't got to keep. They said that word like 500 times <clears throat> in the damn movie. And it's like, again, I don't mind that you want to make the movie about that. That's fine. But just don't treat the audience like they're dumb, you know. You don't have to. You can make it. You can make someone state it like once or twice. Yeah. And then just have, you know, subtle things in the movie that hint towards something like that. I, th- I think uh, a huge part of that is with a, with a movie like Oppenheimer, if you watched any of the promotional trailers for it or anything, you knew what you were getting into. Yeah. I like feel like Barbie kind of lied to you in a way of what it was about. Mm-hmm. Um, because in the trailers and stuff, it's, it's about, and this is not a spoiler, but it's about, you know, Barbie, something's wrong with her where she's not, you know, perfect or malfunctioning so she needs to go to the real world to fix it and then that's the story for 15 minutes and then it just turns into this whole thing that was never even mentioned in in trailers or any of the marketing um so it, like you said like i think you hit it right on the head of don't treat your audience like they're dumb you know it's like imagine if you went to go see oppenheimer and like every scene was oppenheimer going we're gonna make an atom bomb <laughs> yeah we gotta we hurry up How, the atom bomb how's that doing Spoilers. okay cool Jeez. oh the atom bomb did we get the a- did we get the atom bomb? <laughs> did we bomb? make this atom bomb? The atom the, bomb, the biggest bomb in the world. And it's like, are hey, we gonna- we're getting ready to like order some sandwiches. What are you, sandwiches? When I need to be making <laughs> atom bombs? <laughs> like, come on, dude. I, I feel like they they had something with it. Like it was cool. Like I was really no, into, were- into like its own mm-hmm. little world. Like it was almost like a superhero movie, but like in yeah. its own genre. Yeah. And I was all for it. And then yeah. it was just weird. I I feel like a lot of there was a lot of redeeming moments. Um, not okay. Not redeeming. I don't think th- this movie could have been <laughs> redeemed. There's a lot of great moments. Yeah. Uh, where where I did get a laugh, or I did smile, and I was like, oh, that's that's. Oh, dude, funny. I had a lot of moments. Yeah. I laughed. <laughs> Ryan Gosling. <laughs> there really was a funny. lot. Ryan Gosling, and I think we were 100 percent right months ago on this show where we referred to the, this movie as the Ryan Gosling Barbie movie, <laughs> and someone corrected me saying, "You mean the Margot Robbie?" No, that's probably me. The Ryan Gosling Barbie movie. Um. Because he just, he ran away with it. And he, I think he was the star of the show. Honestly, I feel like they kind of tried to make him the main character a few times. Like, 
there were a few times where Barbie was like not doing anything, like especially when she was sitting on the. Well, she was just think. Oh, hold whoops. On. No spoiler. Yeah. Hold okay. On. Yeah, so let's get into spoiler territory. Real quick, now. Real quick though, real quick though. Yeah. Hey, this doesn't have to be a spoiler. Michael Sarah is also pretty good. In this <laughs> Michael <laughs> Sarah, Michael Sarah is uh, is ninety eight percent good. We'll talk about the two percent in the spoilers. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're, right, you're right. You're right. You're right. <laughs> uh, so if you don't want to see any or listen to any spoilers, uh, go ahead and skip ahead to the timestamp on the screen, and uh, we'll we'll see you there. Yeah. So this movie sucks. Yeah, this was straight <laughs> ass. I it's, wasn't represented I at all, right. so <laughs> I'm already, like, offended at this movie, so cancel. Oh, and when Ryan Gosling had the, the sleeveless shirt on, then... Yo, I'm not going to lie, so so <laughs> I showed up to the to the Barbie premiere, right? It's not even a premiere, but Just to be aware that people that made this movie hate people like you. Just oh, that, and Just I, FYI. Oh, no, and it's fine, because I love me enough for that, so it's cool. But uh, I, I just showed up in, like, a freaking sleeveless, and, um, and then Ken's just in a sleeveless shirt for a good amount of it. Felt like a big tool. Pretty proud of myself. <laughs> Pretty proud of myself. Um, no, yeah, th- this movie, I was 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 a joke, and to say the least. I feel like they that's what they kind of had in mind, but it wasn't first. a funny joke though. <laughs> it was it was a bad joke. So, I mean, like when you when you think of a movie about Barbie, you're not expecting it to be. No, serious. it's supposed so to be it's, a, like it's supposed to be a fun movie where you can just you know turn off your brain and laugh, have fun. But they turned it into a lecture against half the audience. Well, one of my things was, is I love going into movies to get me out of the real world. Yeah. I don't want to go into a fake world, like where you're bringing the real world in, because now yeah. it's just, now I'm not really enjoying myself. There was, there was a lot of contradictions in what they were preaching. There was a lot of, um, and just, they were oblivious to everything. Like, for example, it was a weak argument. It, yeah, uh, the fact that just men rule the world, men are completely in charge, is such a weak argument and a very old argument. If that were the case, you wouldn't be able to make this movie with all those A-list actors and all those people in people in power in the Hollywood industry. You wouldn't be able to. You wouldn't be able to do that. As well as it kind of disproves your whole thing of Ken wanting to do all this stuff, all these positions of power in the real world. Oh, you need this, 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 this. You can't do that. And it's it has nothing to do about him just being a man, right? I think... I honestly was expecting that to work. Like when he was like, <laughs> me, but I'm a too. man. And yeah. they would be like, you got it. You, Wh- which would be <laughs> completely unrealistic. They, they did throw a little jab of like, oh yeah, we hit it better. But it still yeah. defeats the purpose exactly. of he can't well, just be a and man. I think, I think it would have been cool... To have all this happen, and then she like runs into a dude. He's like, "Oh hey," or like, like maybe she needs help with something, or maybe she's trying to do something, and like she realizes like, "Oh, not all men here are complete, you know, douchebags." Like, yeah, this guy helped me, or this guy did insert basic human kindness level. So that well, way, it like kind of tra- shows that it's like, hey, it's yeah. you know, not all bad. There's some good. Good. Well, you. There are, believe it or not, after seeing this movie, there are some good men. <laughs> there. Just a few, I guess. Three of them in this room right now. Well, so they go to the real world and just, you know, Barbie feels completely alienated and like, oh, this is not what I thought. Like, women do not rule the world. She stands out, though. She, <laughs> she, she, she rule. So she, women rule Barbie land. Mm-hmm. But do you see how they treat the Kens? <laughs> the Kens are. Nobody's. Nobody's sad. Nobody's. Well, one of my favorite takeaways from this movie is Ken goes to the real world, and is like, "Oh my gosh, men can actually rule." Even though we're oppressed in Barbie Land, I'm going to make the most out of my situation. I'm going to go back there and I'm going to do the best yeah. I can. <laughs> That's the real message that should have been taken away right here. I am glad that at the end of that, Barbie did apologize for like making Ken not feel every night has to be a girl. Yeah, I'm yeah. glad that she did that because if she hadn't, well, like, I'd have been like that. So I think the biggest up. thing with me. Where at the end when, you know, they defeat the Kens, I guess. <laughs> Kens defeat themselves. <laughs> and then the Kens defeat <laughs> so themselves. What happens when you have well, it's energy like, like by, that? By the end of <laughs> it, by the end of it, they're all dancing and singing together. That's what it's about being boys, you know? That's <laughs> that's what it's about. Uh live by the Kens. The Kens had die by the Kens. The Kens had it. Um, by the, Kens. the Kens were the best part of the movie, uh, even though they were portrayed as the bad guys at some point. And, and even though even though not all the Kens are representative of all the men either, they're just all in shape and there's Kens and Allen. 
So as an Allen on SUNY Mexico. Yeah, but that's not Ken. So <laughs> But all of Ken's clothes fit him. True. That's true. <laughs> oh, speaking of Allen, we'll get into Allen in a little yeah. bit. Uh no, I think th- that's like the biggest thing when at the end, like, oh well, everything go back to the way it was. And then the president's like, Well, not everything. Like, let's incorporate the Ken's. And then they did throw in the, the jab of like, oh, maybe one day they'll be able to be in as much power as women are in the real world. And I think that's what they were trying to say with like satirical, where it's like, if you flip it around, it's like, that's kind of how it was well, for a while. But well, what's funny is like, they have to say it. Yeah. They can't like throw little jabs. It's like, no, like, this is like what it is, as if there's not a fucking vice president woman right now. In the fucking but whatever. Multiple women on the Supreme Court. Yeah. That's just. It, it was just a weird, like. Well, I, I think they I, were getting at is that it took a while for that to happen. As all things take a while, because it's all about change, I thought. Either ways, uh, my, my biggest thing was, like, I was trying to look at, like, what's the time zone here? Because they were treating it like it was, like, the 70s and 80s with, like, the, the male construction workers catcalling and all that stuff. Yeah. And, like, they made the jabs, like, oh, there's no women in any power. Yeah. But then it was, like, modern, though. So I was, I was like, kind of. I don't know. If, if this movie was made 20 years ago, maybe I can see an argument for it to, like, make sense. But it's, like. You're you're at you're at the point where there's all this equality, and you're you're completely just ignoring all of that. Not mm-hmm. to mention you went to Los Angeles. I know well, you went to, I know. The worst went to place. Los Angeles. <laughs> I love that they tried to make California like a cool place to go. I'm like, <laughs> and it could be a cool place to work or go. It's a cool place. Well, to Los go, Angeles, not a cool place to live though. Yeah. It, let alone Los Angeles, he chose the worst place. I would rather go to Death Valley. Should have been way more crime in there. the middle of like June. Uh, <laughs> Death Valley on this past <laughs> Sunday you? hit the highest temperature ever recorded. I feel like I'd rather go there than L.A. Yeah, you got shot at. Nobody, LA. I did get shot in L.A. <laughs> Anyways, we're getting off topic. <laughs> First time I got, I got shot, shot when, at. When shut up, you got shot near the oh, like a foot above my house. <laughs> almost in my truck. He almost died. You almost had to write a report. I could have almost died. Um, could have. No, w- when the when the mom gave the the whole speech. Mm. Like it is literally impossible to be a woman. Yeah, is it? Embrace your womanhood, ladies. I mean, I think that's the biggest. I think that's the biggest takeaway. Of we're all different, and there's a reason it's supposed to be that way. Everyone, everyone tries to like. So it's all like stereotypical Barbie. Mm-hmm. Like they're like, oh, like she's just perfect. This, this, you know, blah blah blah. And it's like everyone's trying to be so different, but the same at the same time. It doesn't make yeah. any sense. Like they're kind of bashing. I feel like they kind of bashed Margot Robbie a little bit. Like, what did, what was the line she said? Like, oh, oh, white, because they were trying to make white, her white like, savior, white yeah. savior Barbie, and it's just like, it just, it just feels weird. Yeah, like you guys are really like, I guess well, it's like a stereotype. She but. was the one that was down. They come and save her, and then when she like gets back up, it's like, oh, you're white savior Barbie. It's like what? So just disregard all exactly. the work you Hispanics <laughs> just did. Okay, sure. Um, but she has one on BL. But Careful. no, it's just a lot of contradictions in the movie, yeah. and. So there's all these variations of Barbies, like all these different um, types of Barbies of, you know, disabilities, shapes and sizes, races, something else, all this other stuff and very limited range of Ken's. Exactly. What my point was every, all the Ken's were jacked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they were, <laughs> which I'm fine with. Cause I look at that. And I'm like, dang, I need to get jacked just like that. Yeah. I look at that. And I'm like, dang, I could, Almost there, guys. And I, I think that's an well, age-old thing. And it's funny, like, like I said, the Ken's like Ken went over and he saw, dang, this is what we could do. I'm gonna go back and try to. I'm gonna tell the people yeah. we're gonna try to do this. Not like, dang, we're oppressed. They, so they, they we make, are, we're they victims. Make, basically, they make them the bad guys when they were <laughs> oppressed, and then they took matters into their own hands. They're just living the American dream, bro. <laughs> they they had a chance. <sighs> I I think. Pursuit of happiness. Overall, guys. I think the movie was a big joke and a lot full of a lot of contradictions. Sleep no, shirt. Like, uh, the movie just undercuts everything it says, I think, and one of the prime examples of that is when Barbie's saying, like, I'm not perfect, I'm not this, I'm not this, and then the narrator cuts in of, like, oh, if, if the filmmakers wanted to convey this message, they shouldn't have cast Margot Robbie. And it's like... Yeah. Okay, and like, So what's your message? What, what's your message when... To add on to that, um, Margot Robbie says that, like, oh, I'm stereotypical Barbie, blah, 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 like, all this. And then the girl who created Barbie, the woman, yeah. is like, no, I made you to be that way. Yeah. So it's like, is she supposed to be stereotypical, uh-huh. like, blonde, blue eyes, like, perfect? Or is she supposed to feel bad about that? Because 
I'm getting both messages here from yeah. both the creators. Yeah, I, I think. So I was confused. Because literally the creator of Barbie was like, no, I made you for this reason. Mm -hmm. And then they're like, but all these different variances of Barbie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, it just, it felt forced too a little bit. I mean, which is, like I said, it's fine. I, I expected some of it. it. It is like catered to. I actually don't know what's catered to, but. John Cena was in it. John Cena was in it. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I was Are you John sure? Cena. I didn't see anybody. What are you talking about? <laughs> Nobody was there. The Merman, Merkin. Uh, Merkin. He's Merkin. Oh, so funny. Merkin? They were Merkin on that beach. My favorite part was when they all beached each other off. They all <laughs> beached each other off. See, and then when you have stuff like that, I'm like, oh, this is catering to, like, an adult audience. Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, wait, are this for, like, younger Oh, yeah, especially girls? when one of the characters talks about, like, wanting to see someone's dick. And then the very ending, too. <laughs> it's like, uh, Going to the gynecologist. I was like, yeah. Oh. yeah like it, it's just a conf it's it, confusing I, audience. I think it was also just messy, undercutting a lot of its message. It didn't know what it was. It was just contradicting all that stuff uh with that being said what would you rate it gav well i might not agree with everything you guys said i would probably give this movie like a six and a half i actually probably would watch this movie again despite what other people are probably gonna say i like the soundtrack i liked it i was doing a little finger waggle you know a little foot wiggle <laughs> the begin at the beginning song okay all finger waggle bro. Uh, you do that when you like a song no <laughs> but i was just saying like you know i was like bobbing my head you know I might not like all of Lizzo's songs, but I was like, "You like pink?" Might, might have to add that one. <laughs> like, okay, that one was actually kind of good. The song was pretty good. Do Leap song was good. The Ken song, the Ryan Gosling song at the end. Yeah, whatever song that was, was pretty good. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. You guys like laughed wait, at me wait, when no, I said no, that. Not the Ken song. The like the one when when he made it his uh like his theme. Like when they're in the car and they switched yeah. it. Like I, I said, it, it had it had ch like a, a good man, chance to be pretty like good. I'm giving this movie a seven. This movie's <laughs> a seven now. You hyped me up about I it love, more. I loved it with all the, the horse stuff. <laughs> like, Yeah, he's like, like, I thought it was once, about horses. Once, <laughs> like, I thought patriarchy was about horses, and once once I figured out it wasn't, I just lost interest. <laughs> but he still took <laughs> over everything and, like, made it all about horses. <laughs> like, that was so funny. The Mount Rushmore of horses. Like, everything he saw the school was, was, like, a man on a horse. He's like, man, it's just about a horse. Yeah. No, it, I guess it was cool. It was, um, they had, like, cool moments like that where it, I think it could have been, like, a really good, funny, like, even with the message, it's fine. Um, but I, I do think it, it just kind of missed its mark, which is funny, too, because even Margot Robbie was like, I've seen interviews where she said, once I saw this script, I was like, there's no way this is going to get, like, like green lit. And then once it did, she was like, oh, my gosh, what the heck? And now I kind of see w probably why she thought that. But I would have said it just because there were a few times I would have thought, I don't know if this would have been a kid's movie anymore. Again, that one person saying, like, I can't wait to see, you know, I, I wish yeah. I could see what was underneath them drawers or something and, like that. And, and, and that's, like, and, and, and like, that's my relax. biggest, like, that's my biggest gripe with it is, like, who who was this character? Because people will always say that, like, oh, you don't like the movie? Well, it's not for you. It wasn't made for you. But and who, I agree. I, I don't think this movie was made no, for No, no, but it's like, like but, but who was it made for then? If they're I gonna, think it was made for women, obviously. But. Yeah, but it's, like, the age group. I don't know. It's just weird, like. Probably, like, the Peter Pan, but women, like, 18-year-old women, because older women will watch it, younger people will watch it. I don't, I don't know, it was weird. It was a little bit off. I thought it was funny. And then Michael Sarah, I thought it was... Michael Sarah was funny. He did the oh. best part of being a nobody and then just making jokes about him. He made jokes about himself. Hey, but he betrayed his boys, though. This is what happens. Man, <clears throat> the boys didn't like him, though, to be honest. Yeah, but that was Ken's care. best friend, and he went with the girl, dude. And he voted with the... Oh, my did he... He did. He, was he his best friend? Is that's that's uh, that's Alan Alan oh, that's is Alan's Ken's character? friend, yeah. Oh, the sugar daddy thing was funny. I, I like uh, the discontinued Barbies. That uh, stuff was funny. Like the pregnant Barbie. He's like, I'm. <laughs> no, my dog's named Sugar. <laughs> now there was no, some I funny. See why that one was discontinued? No, yeah, there was there was some funny moments. It's just I do like the real like that kind of real world like where they're like showing the different variations uh -huh. of the Barbies. Oh, that's funny. Oh, the it, credits and stuff. I think yeah. I think at the the core of it all, it's they treated their audience like idiots. Yeah, and alienated half their audience especially with with will ferrell's part like of mm -hmm. it all being just straight men yeah it's like oh, okay you yeah, guys going for that that's fine uh the second i saw in the opening credits kate mcginnon's name i knew it was going to be <coughs> garbage yeah so anyways i give it a four that's all i could think of four that's what i was going to give it uh, i mean four out of ten i I'll, I'll watch it when other people talk about it and like just to see stuff i didn't know like oh i didn't like notice that part but other than that i don't really care too much to watch it again in the same boat. I'll probably watch some Ken scenes and 
the Kennergy. S- some. You watch some. it at Ken. I'd watch it at Ken. <laughs> Three out of Ken. Yeah. So, anyways. <laughs> okay. Fine, guy. Um. No. So that's that's Barbie. Um. Barbie and Oppenheimer. You know, we we really are taking advantage of those two movies trending this weekend. So. <laughs> Ratings. Capitalism. Forget the writer's strike. Or was it actor's strike? It's both. Ah, but both now. Whatever. Um, it's one of my favorite. That's a big debate right now. Oh, do you guys go see it in the movies? Or that's all I keep seeing on, on the news. My nana watches that all the time. I don't care. I don't care either. Um, yeah, so those movies, go check them out. Form your own opinion. Can don't I don't take our word for it? Can, can I? I know something real quick though. Yeah, I didn't get to see Oppenheimer. What'd you rate it? I rated it a six. Okay, and then you eight, eight and, and a half. half. Oh. All right, so it's probably gonna be like a seven. For me, no, actually, we just rated Barbie the same. Yeah, we rated Barbie. Uh, we're me and Gavin will be working on the structure of the show since it'll be a two man show. Uh, we'll have guests on uh, as much as we can. Uh, but we actually do have something very exciting planned for the next episode. Uh, you guys will be shocked. Oh, damn. Just kidding. You, you guys won't be. Gavin will. Uh, we'll leave it at that, though. Shit. We'll, we'll leave it at that. Just uh, because I like Barbie. <laughs> <laughs> damn it. Uh, but, no, I, I've really enjoyed being back in the studio with my boys, despite uh, Paul's hostility. But... I'm supposed to be at work in, like, four hours, guys. But it is what it is. Thank you for having me um, back. Appreciate it. Let us know what you think. Uh, leave a comment uh, if you agree with wh- anything we've said, disagree. We want to know your thoughts. If you saw Oppenheimer and Barbie, what do you guys think of the movie? Were we wrong about anything? Did we... We're going to get slammed. Did we view I'm the movie in Barbie some Barbie was way? so good. You guys suck. I hate you guys. No, it's okay. I'm all for the, the differing I opinions of it and viewpoints. Misogynous. I can't wait for that. I'm not Shut for it. It hurts up. my feelings. You don't know me. It's your feelings. It hurts my feelings. Please don't uh, do that. I don't give a fuck. Emily Blunt was mm. one of the best performers in Oppenheimer. I will say that. Emily Blunt's in Oppenheimer? She plays Oppenheimer's wife. Oh. <gasps> Man, she, she was whipping him all around too. Yeah, dude. she was. She's like, pick yourself. She was up. Like, get a hold of yourself. Oh, I'm like really, bro? I was <laughs> like, that's a. Well, I want that. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I'll go fight with um, her. Yeah, so go, go check out the movies. Leave a comment. Let us know what you think. We're glad to be back. We will be back with more content soon. Um, we just wanted to drop this as a as a little little treat. It's, it's like a reward. Treat, treat, treat. Uh, treat. Rest in peace, Fitz. God bless America. Amen, brother. Anything to say? Not for me. Then it looks like we'll leave it at that. Uh, we'll see you guys soon. Be, uh, be sure to follow our social media uh, on Instagram, OEF White Noise and One Eyed Fits. Um, also, go ahead and check those out. We will be starting up a Twitter soon. Um, it'll be a One Eyed Fits Twitter. We'll we'll be sure to put the handle either on the screen if it's made already, or we'll announce it on our Instagram. Uh, So we hope to see you guys soon and let us know what you think. Bye.